In this video, I want us to have a look over shortcut arguments in MSIX. Now, technically, when you install any type of package, you can place whatever arguments you want to your shortcut. So, for example, let's think of an application. Let's, let's take uh, VLC Media Player as an example, right? So, VLC Media Player has multiple shortcuts. It has the main shortcut that, that everybody opens, the VLC Media Player, but it also has the VLC Media Player skin and VLC Media Player reset preferences, right? Now, if we have a look on how this shortcut is created, so let's right click properties, you see that this is the parameter or the argument, however you want to call it, that is given to the vlc.exe. Now this vlc.exe is the same for all three shortcuts, only the argument is different. Unfortunately, with MSIX, you don't have a native option to add arguments, but that doesn't mean you can't add your shortcut arguments. So I have a test machine here, let's start and download VLC Media Player and make a small MSIX. So if I go to Google and search for VLC Media Player, yes, I want to get this and I want the 64-bit version. Okay. Okay. And now that the download is completed, let's place it somewhere easy, uh, somewhere easy, like on the desktop. Okay. And let, let's start a capture with MSIX Packaging Tool. So, open up MSIX Packaging Tool. Yes, I will give you administrative rights. And let's create an app package. I'm going to use it on this machine because this is my virtual machine. Okay, now it's checking if the driver is installed. So let's give it a bit. Okay, it also updated, uh, it also disabled the Windows update. Let's click next. Let's choose our installer package. I'm going to choose VLC. Uh, I'm going to sign it now. Click next. The package name. Let's call it uh, VLC Media Player. The display name will be VLC. Media player, the publisher name, share display name will be VLC, and the software version I think it's 3.0.12. 3.0.12, and that's pretty much it. Click next. Let's now install VLC Media Player. Next, next. Uh, yeah, leave it as default install. I also want to run VLC Media Player because I want to disable the updates right here. Okay, and let's close it. Now that uh, everything has been done, let's click next. As you can see, the MSIX packaging tool only discovered one executable and one shortcut because, as I said, all the shortcuts point to VLC.exe. There's nothing you, you can do here, so click next. Yes, move on. It's now checking if any services are placed by VLC Media Player, but nothing is here. Okay, next. And let's create the package. Cool. So the package is now created. Let me transfer it to my machine and then we will start implementing the package support framework. Okay, I've now put the package on my machine. Now, the next thing we need to do is go to this website here. I will paste the link in the description of the video. And what we basically need to do here is download the Microsoft Package Support Framework. This is the tool which will help us implement the, short, the shortcut arguments in MSIX. So to download, uh, we can choose direct download and then click here, okay. And this is now our packet support framework. To extract it, the, just go right click, 7-zip, extract to Microsoft blah blah blah, yes, replace everything. And we need some files from here. What we basically need is something from the bin folder. Now, 
technically you don't need to add all of this but let's add all of the dll files the fire redirections the psf launchers the run dlls the runtime the starting script wrapper and that's pretty much it because we are not going to do a trace fix up so let's open up vlc media player so these files must be added in the root of your package so not in the virtual file system not in the vfs folder exactly in the root so to add them right click add file this will be a little bit of a tedious task because uh, maybe i don't know it but i don't see a way to add multiple files so yeah let's go okay now i've added all the files technically the starting script wrapper powershell is only needed when you want to start certain powershell scripts when you launch the application but even if you have it there it won't break anything so not, now that we have everything from the package support framework imported in our package we need to do some editing in the manifest file so to edit the manifest file let's go to package information and scroll down and here you have the manifest file and click open file now this will open up the notepad with all the details so as you can see here we have multiple uh, we have an application right we have an application id which points to the vlc.exe executable this is the display name so forth and so on uh, also everything that is related to it like logos are defined here so what we need to do now is create two more applications in the manifest file now if we search where this application element ends is right at the bottom almost because all of the extensions file type associations and so forth and so on in msix are placed per, in an application element now once they are placed on an application it doesn't make sense to copy and paste them for all of them the msix will know that there are file type associations out there so what we need to do is go back on top and copy right about here copy also the visual elements no okay right this so copy also the visual ele uh, visual elements element and don't forget to close the application element once you've done this we are going to copy and paste it again so let's see we also give need to give them new ids so this will be vlc2 this will be vlc3 now vlc2 will be vlc media player skinned and vlc3 will be vlc media player reset references okay cool and one last thing that we need to do is tell msix that these two applications will start the PSF launcher. So we need to change the executable. We are going only going to change it for the VLC3 and VLC2 application IDs because the main application can start normally. It doesn't make any sense to uh, launch it via the PSF launcher. Okay, and now that we've done this, we can save the manifest and that's pretty much it. Now, what the PSF launcher does is this. You told MSIX that you need to launch PSF launcher. PSF launcher then reads from a configuration, a configuration JSON file. And according to what application ID uh, calls the PSF launcher, you can define in the configuration JSON what executable to start in that case. Uh, now let's have a look i have already created a configuration json file and it looks something like this so if the application id vlc3 this one right here starts the psf launcher the psf launcher executes the vlc.exe which is located under vfs program files vdolan vlc blah 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 and you can pass whatever arguments you want to it. Same thing with VLC2. So VLC2 will start the PSF launcher. The PSF launcher 
we'll read from the configuration JSON file, we'll see that the application ID VLC2 called it, we'll start the VLC executable with the minus L skins arguments. Okay, now we also need to add this configuration JSON file at the root of the package, so near the PSF. So we can add the file, browse, go to my desktop, we have the configuration JSON, save, that's pretty much it. One thing that maybe I forgot to mention is about the PSF launcher executables. So you have the PSF launcher 64 and PSF launcher 32. Now this must be used in accordance to your application uh, build type. So if you have a 64-bit application, use PSF Launcher 64. If you have a 32-bit application, use PSF Launcher 32. Okay. Now the last thing we need to do is just save the new MSIX. No detections were made. No, I don't want to increment. Save it on the desktop. And now let's install it. Okay, cool. Now let's launch our VLC Media Player. It should be somewhere around here under my 3000 apps collection. Okay, so VLC Media Player skinned. Hey, and it started. See? So this is how you add shortcut arguments to your MSI X packages. I hope you find this useful. See you in the next video. Bye bye.